Hey everybody, Unstable Gamer here, and welcome back to Looney Tunes World of Mayhem. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Divine team and asking the question, is Divine worth your time? At least answer it to the best that we can with the information that we were given. But first, before we do, if you're just now finding this channel and you want to stay up to date with this and other games, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out. All right, and welcome back. Just a quick reminder, all the links to my social media are in the description below, so definitely check that out. The Divine Team is coming. We have some information, and we want to go over that really quick and take a look and see if this team is going to be worth the investment, and is it going to be the best Summit team? I'm going to say probably, since it's a team specifically designed to be synergistically superior, in my opinion, just by taking a look at the kit of um, a Verbi's Roadrunner and then a new this canine here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that really quick. But the Divine Team, so just taking a look at this, if you haven't seen this blog yet, this kind of goes over their thoughts on how the Divine Team is gonna work. They wanted to leverage new or underexplored combat mechanics. We do have a couple members of the roster, a couple tunes that can already do revive, like Dr. Franken Beans and uh, <laughs> Granny Thanos. So they have that. Uh, so this is going to play into that a little bit. Um, also, they wanted to put some unloved, an unloved region on the map, which is Summit. Summit has Summit, along with Farm, is probably the most underdeveloped regions in the game right now. And Summit, I think, probably being the region that has uh, the least number of tunes that have any significance, really. Farm, I think, has some good tunes. But both of them, both of them, really need some love and that's what they did here with providing Hermes Roadrunner with Summit. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, some other things here. So they wanted to do that. They also wanted to shake up the competitive meta. The competitive meta, we've talked about that a few different times, which I think is cool because again, um, the meta is kind of all over the board, meaning you've got many teams that do a great job. I think probably uh, the team at the top right now is, is the um, Imperial team. But this team really, this team might be the new meta. And I do have a little bit of concerns over this team because it does seem that this is a godly team. But when you take a look at the individual parts of this team, um, you may not really recognize that. So just taking a look at this Hermes right here, starting skill. With it, while this tune's in battle, all team members members have 33% chance to reduce a random cooldown by one. We haven't had that mechanic in the game. We've been able to stall other teams out and stuff like that. But to have a mechanic that re that reduces the cooldown of our own abilities. Now, it's very much random. Uh, it says a random cooldown by one at the end of their turn. So each member by at the end of their turn has a 33% chance. So one third of the time, they're going to get a cooldown reduction, which is cool. And I think that's really going to come into play with this team here because that just makes the team move much faster. If they're divine, this is a 100% chance. So um, they've also wanted to do an effect like this for a long time. And Hermes, the Messenger God, felt like a great tune to do this with. I'm just kind of looking at this. Never in the world of war, uh, world of mayhem has cooldown reduction extended to allies in this way. That's very true. So winged return, revive a, a, a random ally. So a random ally at 50% max health, granting them 100% turn meter, cleanse all speed down if they have any speed down, and gain two speed up for the rest of battle. So right off the bat, they're gonna come back with 50% health. They're also gonna come back uh, twice as fast, or two times as fast. However you wanna take a look at that. Two speed up for the rest of battle. And then next, to simulate immortality, Divine Tunes will have this revive feature in some way. Although each effect isn't entirely new. It says right here, next, to simulate immortality, Divine Tunes will all feature revive in some way. They're going to play with that mechanic, and we're going to see that in a couple different ways here. And then when the rest of the Divine Team introduces their on revive trigger, so whenever somebody revives, there's some sort of trigger that's going to play. This is where I have concerns with this team and it being probably a little too OP and probably being the team that everybody is going to want to get because it's going to be super competitive. So um, so we have that. And then on to point two, Divine Team, although not exclusively, will reign from the heavenly abode in the summit region. So not all of them are going to be from there. 
Uh, no one region, because I think this guy, Anubis K9, I think he's space, but no one region should feature only one mechanic, and Summit has always suffered. That is true, because Chilean Freeze, they've had that for a long time. That's been the mechanic for Summit, uh, but it hasn't really been uh, fantastic. It hasn't been able to join the meta, really, um, like you have with with like uh, crits and damage over times, Imperial team like we talked about before, all these different teams that do a fantastic job at what they do. You've got, um, you've also got the damage immunity teams uh, that recently kind of just started fleshing out a little bit more. All right, so that's what this blog is talking about. So let's go ahead, let's jump into the game and let's take a look at both of these divine tunes and talk about them individually really quick. All right, so here we go. We're in the roster. I'm filtering by divine. We have the two tunes right now. So when we take a look at Hermes Roadrunner here, let me go ahead and rank them up really quick. Um, when you take a look at the individual divine team members, this one in particular, he's not really fantastic. He, he doesn't really stick out as being a tune that you would really want to put a whole lot of effort into. But when we start taking a look at Anubis K9 here in a minute, you're going to see that um, that they start really playing on each other, right? So this one right here, right now, you do some damage and you do some minor healing. Minor healing. The, the only thing that kind of is cool about this is that you can do this every single turn. There is no cooldown on this because it's as basic, uh, but the health is very, 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 very minor. But there is a mechanic in there that whenever a Divine Tune receives healing, something happens. So, so we have that. That really doesn't do a ton of damage. It really doesn't do a ton of healing. This mechanic here is pretty good. You get three defense up to all allied attackers. I mean, uh, defenders, three attack up to attackers and two speed up for support. It goes really quick though. So a lot of times what you're gonna do with this tune is you're gonna spam this a lot until somebody dies. <laughs> until somebody dies, then you're gonna go ahead and then you're gonna move on to this ability right here, which is the winged return we saw. So random ally, 50% max health, granting them 100% turn meter. So at where I have them now, we're going to be able to, not only are they going to come back to back with max with 50% max health, but they're also going to be able to go right away, attack or heal themselves or whatever, depending on, on, on who the tune is, right? And then we're cleansing five speed down and we're gaining two speed up for the rest of battle. So uh, we have that. And then you have a couple of the passives, right? So we have this one right here. So while this tune is in battle, we saw that 33% chance to reduce the random cooldown, 100% chance for divine... And then this one right here, whenever a team member revives, grant it two to three speed up for the rest of the battle. So it's going to revive. It's going to give that two speed up already right here. Boom, gaining two speed up for the rest of battle. But right here, boom, grant it two to three speed up for the rest of battle. I haven't been able to see if that's going to stack or not really yet, uh, but it looks like it. And then if it's divine, inflicting all enemies with two to three speed down for the rest of the battle. So you're going to res a divine. They're going to get a massive amount of speed up. Plus, you're going to inflict all enemies with two to three speed down. That is pretty good right there. But you don't, it doesn't really come into play until you add the divine, other divine members of this team in there. So that's this tune. Very, very blah, in my opinion. But then let's go ahead and take a look at the legendary tune that we have. This dude's from space, and we take a look at the abilities here. So you're going to deal some damage to the target enemy, healing the team member with the highest attack for 5% max health. Okay, so we got a little bit of healing there. You got some damage with this ability here, and 26 damage to the enemy with the lowest defense. Okay, we have that. But then we start getting into some of these. So revive a random ally. So the second tune that can revive a random ally at 50% max health, granting all allies two piercing up for two turns. Gain two attack up for the rest of battle. So he is not just specific to divine when it comes to this mechanic. It's all allies. That would be pretty good pairing him up with Star Pharaoh Marvin. But so another tune that right. So you got multiple revives here. So you're going to be able to keep your team coming back from the dead, right? And then this one here, deal five damage to all en enemies for each buff on the most damaged ally then you're going to defeat that alibi. So this is like a self-sacrifice. You got a tune that is almost dead anyway. So you're going to go ahead and do this. You're going to do five damage, deal five damage to all enemies for each buff on the most damaged ally. Then that ally is going to be defeated. And then whenever a divine team member defeats an enemy, reset this skill's cooldown. Now that he's dead, he can come back half health, 
tons of <laughs> tons of speed, attack ups, piercings, what have you. So that's interesting. Next, we go on to Golden Fang. Once per each team member's turn, whenever they are healed, grant them attack up. That goes back to Hermes Roadrunner. A very minor heal, but even though it's a minor heal, you're getting attack up and attack up and attack up. You could just keep racking that up. Now, it doesn't say for any specific period of time, so it's going to be fairly quick. That's the one thing about these buffs. They don't last for a very for too long, but you're able to rebuff quite a bit. You're able to revive quite a bit. So it's pretty interesting kind of how this is already shaping up and what we're looking like. If we just go into here and we just take a look at the max, now that we saw that, let's go ahead and just take a look really quick at the max ability for this <laughs> for this guy right here. Now this guy comes out this week, I think, if I read that right, but look at this. So right here, tune up 30. Whenever a team member revives, grant it four attack up for the rest of the battle. If it's divine, inflict all enemies with four defense down. For the rest of the battle, you got the glorious revive an enemy, 50% health, grinding all allies, three piercing up for two turns, gain three attack up for the rest of battle. Uh, what else do we have? Golden Fang, once per each team member's <laughs> turn, whenever they are healed. It's it's every team, it's every time, every team member's turn, whenever they're healed, grant them three attack up. Whenever a team member revive, we already saw that one, and then you got your strength here. So, um, and then Crooked Flail, damage to target enemy, damage to the enemy with the lowest defense as well. And then you got Cross the Veil. So when you take a look at the very first tune, we got Hermes Roadrunner, not really fantastic, but then you layer in Anubis K9, things start falling together, the team starts looking really good. So I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little afraid of what the other two tunes are going to do. Uh, this sounds like an absolutely massive team. It looks like, it sounds like it's gonna be a very difficult team to beat. And it sounds like it's going to be a team that is good on both a defense and offense game mode. So anyway, that, those are my thoughts. That's the Divine team. Is it worth your time? Absolutely, I think it's worth your time. I think it's going to be the team to have for a little while anyway. Because I do kind of see, I have seen in other mobile games where once an enemy is taken down with a specific ability, they cannot be revived. I can see that mechanic kind of coming into this game as well to counter to counter this team eventually. I think a stall team would come in pretty well with this. It's just with every with multiple team members having revive, it's going to be very, very difficult to take this team down. So, so those are my thoughts on this team. Very interested in your thoughts as well, so definitely let me know. And there you go, everybody. That's what I had for you today. As always, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.